I was always constructing and taking things apart in my bedroom. Loved building towers and, and structures. To my mum's horror, I wouldn't read that much. I was always just sort of deconstructing and making things. Not that she minded that, I think she just minded me not devouring books like she does. So was always, there was always a sort of splice of two things. I was always surrounded by other subjects, not just art history, but philosophy and, and history and English and, and science. They sort of were things that I was seeking sort of inspiration from. Being architecture or, or sculpture, I think, was always something that I was considering. But I think, basically, it was sort of... I, I didn't really have the patience and the, all the regulations around architecture. With sculpture, there's no, there aren't any regulations. You don't have to make something a certain height, or it's all just completely free and uncontrolled. So it's great. You can the only, your only constraint really is gravity. So I don't have the patience for a lot of things like painting and but I have the patience to build complex machines somehow. They take a, a lot of um, organization and logistics, and, and but also interesting creative partnerships with people. So I work with really gifted structural engineers and mechanical engineers, and, and it's very humbling. My, a lot of the people in my studio, sort of people who I've trained, are sort of really becoming wonder, wonderful makers. There's a lot of drawings on the backs of envelopes in my sketchbook originally, but the journey is, is definitely part of it. I mean, it's um, all the design stages and all the, 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 the kind of um, development of the systems and the, the geometry and the proportion and the engineering behind it is always really, when it's on paper and you're making prototypes, it's, it's one of the most important bits. One of the challenges an artist and a scientist shares is the envisioning of the invisible. A scientist will try and represent things that are larger or smaller than the human eye will ever be able to perceive. But there is a certain amount of imagination that goes into that. And, and likewise, an artist is very much trying to represent things that are uh, abstract or invisible or, or beyond comprehension. And we have to, as visual, verbal animals, we have a need for visioning of information. And um, so I think there are there are real there is real common ground between the art, the artist and the scientist in that regard. My work ha is always involving quite a lot of mathematics and geometry, and there's a very rational approach. But at the end of the day, they're hopefully they just they end up being poetic, beautiful objects.